Caution, the Mark Hunger Show contains adult content intended for an adult audience. And, besides that, he's really weird. Welcome to the Mark Gunger Show with international marriage speaker and author of Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage, Mark Gunger. This is your source for practical, down-to-earth marriage advice without all the over-spiritualization or romantic nonsense. And now the host of the Mark Gunger Show, Mark Gunger. And the crowd goes wild with delirious joy. They've joined the Mark Gunger Show that deals with all things concerning... Hello? <laughs> Where's Where it concerning? Are you? There I am. Come on! Marriage! Marriage. Computer's not... Marriage. Anyway, I am, of course, your host, the one, the only, Mark Gunger. Joining me is always the very lovely and charming uh, Diane Briarly. It's blue. Look it's... on the screen. It's blue. Still looks blue-green to me. I don't know. I can't tell. Oh, on that screen, it looks more blue. <clears throat> also joining us, <laughs> Philip James Gunger. This is also blue. That is blue. Mm-hmm. I That's can see blue. the blue there. I don't know. My eyes We're are shirt buddies. Good. We're shirt buddies. And <laughs> engineering the show, as always, the very talented but eerily creepy <laughs> Timothy Robert Ray, pushing buttons, twisting knobs, and trying to stay awake during this incomprehensibly, immeasurably boring show. This is the show that handles your marital challenges, relational conundrums, and dating dilemmas that you can email to us at ask ask. At markgungor.com. What color is this jacket, do you think? That's gray. Is it gray? It's a blue gray. I'm a beautiful man. That's so pretty. I kiss myself. Mm-hmm. All right, what do you got there? Okay, who knew <laughs> husbands can be nagged to death? Huh. Literally, men can be nagged Apparently, to death. A Danish study that they conducted over 11 years, uh-huh. the researchers determined that those who were frequently worried by or had demands placed on them by partners and or children had a 50 to 100% higher risk of early mortality than those who lived peaceable <laughs> lives. Oh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Those who got demands placed on them by ch- partners and children. There's always demands placed on you by partners and children. Maybe excessive. I don't know. They said in the study, we found that men were especially vulnerable to frequent worries and demands from their partner, contradicting earlier findings suggesting that women were the more vulnerable ones to stress in social relations. Well, no shock there. One study will come out and contradict the other study. Mm-hmm. And another study, if you drink coffee, you're going to die. If you drink coffee, you'll live forever. If you have too much salt, it's bad for you. Now they're saying you don't have enough salt. Then they said you got to have, you know, six glasses of water a day. Now no one says, says that this is ridiculous. It only just stresses out your bladder. I mean, it just never ends. I know. It's all about how you listen to it. Like when I went to my physical, I had my first physical in like 15 years or something. All right. What I gathered from him was that I was in the same physical condition as Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> that might not have been exactly what he said, but that's what I'm walking That's what with. you figured that's, out. That's what he heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. They say men respond to stress with higher levels of cortisol, which may louse up their health. Only demanding spouses and children seem to have this life-threatening effect on people. Annoying neighbors and in-laws, not so much. So it was only the children and the spouses that bothered y'all men. I don't know. Who knows? All I know is the Bible says better, better to live on the corner of the roof than in a house with a contentious woman. I guess that's the Bible's way of saying, yes, you can be nagged to death. (laughs) Who knows? We will be back with your emails about life, love, and relationships right after this break. Download your free Mark Gunger app today to see all of the latest from the world of Mark Gunger. Smooth blues groove. 
of the Reverend Jimmy Bratcher. Check out his music at jimmybratcher.com. All right, what do you got for us She today? says, I need your opinion on what an emotional affair is. Mm-hmm. My husband has been texting a woman every day, even several times a day for the past two years. He says that because it is just daily stuff about their lives, that it isn't an emotional affair. What do you say? By the way, I have already told him not to be in contact with this woman before, but he kept doing it. And he has had an emotional affair before with another woman at church. I need your advice because he seems, he sees it as nothing wrong. He says he was never even convicted about it. As in prison? (laughs) As in a court of law? (laughs) They've never convicted me of it! Well, you hear people say that. If the glass is not fit, you must quit! God hasn't convicted me on it, so therefore... If the glass is not fit, you cannot convict! Well, you, you nothing would ever fit quit. you. You must, must quit. quit. It's supposed to rhime. That wasn't even close. If the glove, does if the glove not doesn't fit, fit you've got to let me go. You've got to let him go. Wait a minute. If the glove doesn't fit, you must quit. <laughs> must quit. If the glove does not fit, you must quit. He has not been convicted. So there. It's, explain to me the whole <clears throat> uh, emotional affair thing. Explain it. Yeah, what well, you- what's interesting to me, uh, just before you do that, she said that he has had an emotional affair in the past. So apparently she does have some sort of definition of what that what constitutes an emotional affair. But now she's not sure about this one. That was a little puzzling to me. I I uh so it, define emotional affair. When your emotions are Having connected to someone else. Relations with other emotions? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when your emotions are <laughs> no. Different people define it different ways. Uh, Just because you're texting with somebody doesn't necessarily mean there's emotions attached to that. You could be texting once a day to somebody and have great emotional attachment to that person. And although it shouldn't matter if she tells him to stop and he that's, doesn't, that, that is guy's exactly just right. Dumb. For that example, exactly dear right. Diane, Diane, I want to strangle you to death. Mm-hmm. Is that an emotional affair? No. There's emotions involved. This is true. Is that an emotional <laughs> homicide? Mm-hmm. Is that an emotional homicide? But I have not been convicted. <laughs> does true. it have to? If the glove does not fit, you must quit. Here's another question: what? Do those emotions have to be reciprocated in order for it to be constituted an emotional affair? Look, here's the problem. To be honest with you, I have a problem with the idea of an emotional affair. I just don't like it. I. Here's the problem of it. it if you get emotionally attached to someone, it can actually lead to an affair. Mm-hmm. All right. But when you start getting to emotional affairs and talking those kind of terms, you're analyzing someone's hearts and their internal workings and stuff. And in a way, you're kind of in dangerous territory because you don't really know what someone's feeling one way or the other. And people can debate that. You're not supposed to be judging people. And judging means uh, coming to conclusions when you don't really know what someone's going inside somebody. We're not supposed to do that. Condemning an actual affair is not judging. That's condemning something the Bible blatantly speaks against. The problem is an actual affair, having a physical affair. What a person does, again, we are obsessed in this country with emotions and how we feel. And if I feel this, I have to do that. I have to, ah, and now people are obsessed. Well, because you're feeling this way about somebody else, therefore you're ha- having an affair. There are people who equate, and I'm talking a lot of mm-hmm. Christian people, who equate an emotional affair with an affair. And it is absurd. It is not an actual affair. The Bible condemns. <laughs> it's going to get graphic, but I'll behave myself. The Bible condemns physically having sex with someone you are not married to. That is adultery. It never talks about this emotional affair stuff. Now, I get being opposed to it and saying it's dangerous and I don't like it and you've got to stop it and all this kind of stuff. But I know people who actually divorce people because, because of, of emotional. emotional. I talked to one couple to this day. They. Uh, are a disaster. And I, I was trying to counsel them. I said, what happened? She said, well, well, I had an affair. I said, well, what kind of affair? Said, well, it was just an emotional affair. I said, what do you mean emotional I guess I don't affair? understand the full throttle over that. Well, that's I what I'm I saying. Don't understand and I, so I have a problem with that. I think people are crazy when they get into this. Life isn't hard enough about trying to keep people, people actually keeping their pants on that we've got to now go to emotional affairs. I just, I don't, look, I get a, a spouse having a problem. With, anyway, in this case of this couple, so, he had an affair. Well, I'm guilty of adultery. What do you mean you're guilty of adultery? Well, I, I had an emotional affair. I said, oh, okay, but, you know, and I know in our heart, Jesus says that's the mm-hmm. same thing as adultery, but the real problem is the actual acting it out. Jesus said the same thing about hating someone or getting angry with someone, same as killing them. Mm-hmm. But I promise you, folks, there's a big difference between getting mad at someone, like Diane... <laughs> And actually killing Diane, okay? Now, there's a big difference, and I think Diane would agree. 
<laughs> There's a big difference. I'm in that. going to report him for murder. <laughs> I'm going Here's to call 911 and say a murder has me. been committed. Here's the problem. If she does mysteriously yeah. disappear, everybody's going to turn to you. All these shows. You know. <laughs> if the glove does not fit, <laughs> you must acquit. All and I'll say, evidence. dude, you're guilty. You right said you're going to kill her all these times. All the evidence. So I get I get the emotional part in Jesus in terms of heart purity, yes. but it's not the same. It's not the same as physically killing someone and getting mad. Jesus said in the matter of heart, I get. But it's not actually the same. Same thing with adultery. Of the heart, I get impurity before God. That I get. But it's not exactly the same as actually doing it. Okay? And you, so anyway, so this couple, their life has been a disaster because she had, I said, well, tell me about the emotional affair. What did you do? Well, I said, I just felt really attracted to him. Well, did you ever kiss him? Oh, no. Never touched him. And, if, and to this day, they can't get past it. Their life is horrible. She They're, can't get past it or he can't get past it. Both of them it. can't because they actually, they both are convinced she committed an affair. You're going to slap some people. You're telling me? So these people, and it's, <laughs> it's been going on for decades. It's gone. I mean, these people are going to live miserable to the day they die. All because some... You can't let it go? All because I would argue some idiot Christian told them that it's the same. It's equated. This, it is not the same. Just because you feel something doesn't mean you're guilty of an affair. Even if you feel inappropriate things, it's still not the same. And b- before you and God, I get that. Jesus said it's the same. But it's not actually the same anymore. People say it is the same. Well, then we need to throw you in prison for murder because you got mad at your mm-hmm. boss or whatever. It's the same thing in terms of God, mm-hmm. but it's not actually the same yes. thing. I have a problem with people getting crazy and equating their emotions as the same as reality. And I promise you, all you people who think you're arguing for righteousness, you're not arguing for righteousness. You have got caught up in the secular culture that equates emotions with reality. If you feel it, it is it. It's real. It has to exist because you felt it. And I'm telling you it's not. People say, I'm gay because I feel gay. I'm, I'm this because I feel this. Well, I, I got to do this because I feel this. Uh, I feel attracted to somebody, so I have to go commit adultery. I know a pastor. He had a huge church, growing like crazy, and he went and committed adultery. I said, well, why would you do that? Well, I felt, well, I, I felt this. I, thought, I figured I might as well do it. Seriously? This whole obsession with feeling and acknowledging feelings as the truth in your life will destroy you. Should you control your feelings? Yes. Should he be not connected emotionally to another one? Yes, I get that. And if I were you, I'd bring down the hammer. The fact that she says, well, he's done this before and I think he's guilty of that and she doesn't really do anything about it is a problem on her end. Mm -hmm. But it's not an affair. I just disagree with this. And I know in our culture, yes, it is an affair. I'm telling you, it's not. Well, it's an emotional affair. Nonsense. It's a bad emotion. It's get an rid emotional of the affair. entanglement, I but get I would that. not say that it, it's an affair. It is not the same. No. It is not adultery. Adultery is when you actually commit adultery. Is it bad? Is it wrong? Yes, all that. But quit equating the same because it's not. And I'm telling you, it is this obsession in our culture. If you feel it, it's real. And I'm telling you, <laughs> there's times I feel angry. <laughs> There's times that I feel a lustful thought. I know it's hard to imagine. A man as pure as me, pure as the wind-driven snow. Mm-hmm. Some gorgeous baby goes by and, uh, whoa, hello. Okay, so this, we all, but that stuff does not define me. Even if I go over the lawn and I have to repent later. If you go over the, the lawn? Li- the, li- the line. <laughs> the, the lawn? lawn. If I drive along the lawn. If I'm driving on my neighbor's lawn. <laughs> over the line, okay. Over the line, then I have to repent. But it's not the same. Oh my gosh, I would be as miserable as these people if I thought everything I thought and felt defined who I was. And I promise you, there are millions of people of faith that are convinced of that. Mm-hmm. Because they feel it, it's them, and they have to give in to it because I felt this, or I thought this. I had this same-sex attraction, so I have to do it. Everybody's convinced that whatever they feel, it's them, it defines them, it makes And I'm telling you, it does not. Your actions... Or speak more louder than what you feel. God's word defines us. It's not our feelings. So I think this lady needs to back off with the emotional Mm -hmm. fair nonsense. The bottom line is if this guy is talking to a woman you don't want him to talk to, and all of a sudden you tell him to stop it. If he doesn't stop it, you move out. It's just that simple. And when he comes home, you're not there. Why? Where'd you go? I told you, if you kept connecting with this lady, I'm not going to stick around. You know, you stop it. And I promise you, he'll stop it. If you don't do it, and again, here's the problem. People like this woman, and millions of them, want change, but they don't want the conflict. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want the confrontation. She wants to talk, but she doesn't want to do anything. Very simple. You want him to stop, you draw the line. You leave. He comes home, you're not there. 
No one said divorce. No, it's not that big a deal. You go stay with your mom for the weekend. Go to a spa. Get a massage. <laughs> Relax a little bit. Just you not being there without his consent will freak him out. He will call. He will panic. You tell him, I'm telling you, you cannot talk to this woman anymore. I'm not putting up with this. And then ask him if he's convicted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then ask him if he's convicted then. Then he'll be convicted. Here's the thing. Everybody that he goes to to complain that you're gone, when they find out what he's doing, he will be convicted in the public opinion. And he will stop. If you don't do it, he's not going to stop. It's just that simple. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Have a marriage dilemma? Email your questions to ask at markgunger.com and Mark can answer them during one of our shows. Get about the market, we'll get about the bills. Tonight there'll be no Look at your papers around here. Check your blues at the door. I'm right. She's never right. Answering your questions. We're looking at some money questions. Money, money, money. Okay. She wants to know, what happens when your husband ruins your credit, takes all the money, and you can't even get a personal bank account to protect yourself because your credit's so bad and the bank won't give you an account because your spouse doesn't pay the bills? What then? What is she doing getting different accounts and stuff with banks? She's trying to go get money, apparently, because he spent it all. Oh, the problem here is you're looking at someone, they're not even on the same page financially at all. Yeah, she wants to know what do you do. Well, you got to need to get on the same page with this guy. So her answer is, I'm going to be on a totally different page. This is, you have to understand, as I've said before, a marriage is a legal business. Financially, it's a legal business. You go to a divorce court, even a separation court. If there's not children involved, or even if there is, that's dealt with separately. Mm-hmm. But the whole issue is about the legal standing of the business. Who owns what? Who pays for this? What the financial arrangement? It's all a bit. Just like if you went into business with a friend. Think of your best friend. You go into business with that friend. You guys need to get on the same page financially with where. If the one partner... Uh, decides that he's going to ruin the company's business and not pay the bills, and now you're mad because you want to go without the permission of the other partner to go get your own money and stuff like that. That's not a business. That's a disaster. You'll fi- wind up in bankruptcy. Why she is running off thinking Well, well because she says he gets payday loans all the time without her knowledge, you know, and those have like 20-whatever percent, 18 percent interest rate. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so he's doing all of this. She's trying to counter and, I guess, figure out, you know, how to handle this. But you can't just go off and create your your own entity by yourself. Problems. That's what she's trying to do. Everybody, they don't understand. It has to work. And if it's not and someone's out of control, you get a legal separation until you can fix it. A legal separation is not a divorce. Here's the problem. Yes. You have Tell to me put the problem. A, no, you have to put sometimes a rather large retainer fee down to secure a lawyer to get a legal separation. If you have no money... I would How try and find a lawyer. He'll do it as cheaply as possible. You tell me, you can't you get a separation without an attorney? Uh, well, I suppose if you went online and did all of the online I'm stuff. Just, what, I'm, I just think there's a again. You tell people here's the answer, and then you get well. I can't do it. Well, it's a hogwash. There's you always can uh-huh. do it. You know and that's the problem. How many times people come to us and say, "Here's the problem." Well, here's what you do. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah. Well, of course you can. Well, well I, can. I don't know. Maybe you find a lawyer well, who does it for I, free. What? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. I, you I'm can't just... do it online because online is people who actually agree to it and you just put the input in. You have to find, you know, you they couldn't do it online that way. You I have don't to find know. Somebody. I mean, you're telling me that in America you're doomed to ruin because you can't afford an attorney, that you don't have rights, you have to pay an attorney Twenty thousand dollars to get something done. I that just doesn't. If that's what's right, then that's what's wrong with America. Well, that needs to be fixed. Not, it's not twenty. It might be two thousand. But someone like this, they might not have two thousand uh, dollars. Okay, you would do this earlier when you still had the two thousand dollars. Look, you want a solution? Everybody's going. I can't. I can't. I can't. Then don't email me and go talk to somebody else. Here's what you do. You got someone who's destroying you financially like that. You go and you get a legal separation. You stop it. Well, you protect yourself financially, so you're not in the toilet you're in right now. You're in the toilet, and I'm telling you how not to get in the toilet. Now she's a well, I'm in the toilet. How do I get out? <laughs> I don't know. You still have to get a legal separation. If you're going, if the way you get out is you 
have to get back on the same page. If you're going to have this successful business, you and your partner have to get on the same page or the business cannot function. I don't care what business it is, any actual business or marriage business, but it's a business. You have to get on the same page. If you can't, then legally you have to go protect yourself as you would in a business. Mm -hmm. Those are the only answers. You either get it together with your partner or you protect yourself legally from the destruction of that other person. There are no other answers. Except for the standard Christian answer. Just pray about, about it. it. <laughs> Which is the Christian version of I don't want to tell you what to do because I don't know what to do and I don't want to be responsible for anybody's actions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so spiritual. <laughs> Not very helpful, but very spiritual. You can pray about stuff. God help you through your situation, give you some wisdom, but you're still going to have to make some choices. Mm-hmm. You either get on the same page with a guy or you protect yourself. That's it. Those are your only two options. But to try to go get more money and get your own loan, that's just digging your hole deeper. Well, anyway. here's what fries my Puerto Rican pancakes. Someone like this was, and we don't know what she's saying. Mm-hmm. Someone like, well, I can't afford to get a separation. You know what they wind up doing? They're going to get a divorce. Miraculously, they can afford a divorce. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting? How can they afford a divorce, but they can't afford counseling? They can't afford a separation. They can't afford this. I can't afford that. I can't afford that. I, I can't afford hairspray for my hair. I can't afford I can't afford pasture. I can't do anything because I can't afford it. But they'll wind up divorced. Miraculously. Out of the thin air of God's creation. Boom! They can get a divorce. I have never known anyone who has not gotten a divorce because I'm sure there must be out there somewhere who would think this. But I mean, anybody, because of, well, I can't afford it. People get divorced all the time. And nobody can afford it. It's absurd. It's insane. I have heard tell of people that don't divorce because they can't afford it. Well, I, but I don't know anybody personally. I, I don't. Look, there's always somebody crazy it. somewhere. Because you'll just I'm just saying, leave. bottom line, this lady eventually will divorce her husband. Probably. Now, she could save that by doing an interim step. If you get a legal separation, it's going to jerk the slack out of him. And the judge is going to separate this, that, and the other and protect you financially so you can function financially. It's not, if he's this bad, you needed a legal... Here's the, here's the problem. She should have done this early on. Why are everybody so opposed to separation? I just don't get it. Well, well we're against divorce. Is- no one said divorce. It's separation. You, it's like someone who has tumors all over their body. And they write to me, Dear Dr. Mark, I have tumors everywhere. What should I do? Well, what did you do when you first got the tumor? I didn't do anything. See, she, you have to do something right away. She should have done, the minute he starts acting this way and starts creating this destructive situation, she should have filed for a legal separate and protected herself. Her friends around her, her pastor, everybody should have told her to do that. They don't, so now she's in this toilet. All right. We'll talk about something else when we come back after this break. Caution. The Mark Hunger Show contains adult content intended for an adult audience. I don't think I've ever heard a song. Yeah, I never did either. It must be new. Is that a new tune, J- uh, Timmy? Timmy? Is that a new album or something? Or just, just I one of the think songs that was album I never bothered to listen to. <laughs> the music of Jimmy Bratcher. We're back on the Mark Gunger Show, talking about love, marriage, and relationships. Uh, we're going to do a segment. This is going to be on our flag page segment. This is where we talk about the tool that we use to help people to understand who they are and who they're married to so they can succeed with each other and move on. Now, there's a lot of different... You can take the test on at flagpage.com. Now, we did a survey mm-hmm. of, of people on our uh, on the internet that connect with us, which is most people on this show. Mm-hmm. And the biggest chunk of them have never taken the test, which is stunning to me. Now, a lot of them have, you know, watched a DVD or bought a book or something from me. You guys, really, you should go online and take this test, flagpage.com. And when I say test... It's the easiest test you'll ever take because it asks you no questions. Three steps. One step, it'll just give you a list of words. Every word that you believe describes you, you click on that word. That's all it is. Okay? Now, some people get hung up with that Mm -hmm. (laughs) because they Mm overanalyze. You know, gee, am I this? Am I not that? I don't know. Sometimes I'm this. Sometimes Well, just skip that. that. If you have to sit and wonder if that describes you, the answer is a no. Okay? Just all, because they all, everybody sees words they immediately identify with. And then people get into the weeds wrestling over that. We don't care about the wrestle. Just all the ones, yes, clearly that describes me. But step number two, 
You're right on a scale of one to ten, how these words make you feel when you're being it. Well, I'm a one, or I kind of like that. That's a five, or man, I love it when I'm like that. That's a ten, or whatever you do. And then step number three, you prioritize the final list that it gives you, A, B, C, D, E, and you push a button. And instantly it gives you a full-page colorful printout that'll show you a picture and explain to you why you act the way you act, why you react to things the way you react to them, where you're most likely to succeed in life based on the passions of your heart. Because a lot of people are stuck in, let's face it, are doing jobs and stuff they hate. They hate doing what they do. Now, it's okay because sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Like Diane, she has to do this stupid job. <laughs> Just she finds a better one. Mm-hmm. You gotta do, no one's just saying just quit and go running off, but pursue what you love, right? Yes. Because if you do what you love, you'll thrive. But if you do what you hate for a living, it explains this, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> explains Diane's explains frustration. frustration. <laughs> uh, so it'll show you what you what you love to do in life. Here's an example. Let's say on your flag page, uh, it shows that you have lots of. Uh, People skill. You just love to be connected with people. And, and on the graph, there's all this blue, which is the color for people. But then your job is you sit in the basement of a company in a cubicle where you never speak to anyone uh, doing spreadsheets. Chances are you're going to be miserable. Mm-hmm. Now, can you do it? Sure you can. Should you even continue to do it? Because that's what you have to do right now to support yourself and your family. Of course. Mm-hmm. We've all done jobs, including me. <laughs> that I did not like or hate it. But you got to do what you got to yes. do. But you're not going to thrive. If you're a person who loves to be around people, and try, you need to start finding somewhere where you can do that kind of thing, okay? Uh, which can be challenging in people's lives making that transition. But anyway, it shows you what where you're most likely to succeed. And then finally, it creates this little flag. That's why it's called the flag page. There's a little flag up in the uh, uh, right-hand corner where it shows you the five things that you love the most about life, which is really the key to your succeeding. So now when you take the test, go online, flagpage.com. You take it, and then let your spouse take it. Now, when your spouse takes it, and I'm speaking to the women here, <laughs> let your husband take it without input <laughs> from you. <laughs> you know, we used to do this, where we'd uh, mm-hmm. do these kind of road shows where we'd go mm-hmm. to these conferences and stuff, and we'd set up these kiosks where people mm-hmm. could take the test. And these women would take that, and they just loved the printout. Now, everybody, because all it's going to show you, some people are afraid, oh, it's going to show me what a bad person I am. No, all it shows you is who you are at your very best, okay? So these women are all like, oh, this is great, this is awesome. And then their husband would come over, they'll drag their husband, oh, you got to come take this. And then the husband starts doing it, and she says, no, don't do that. Well, that's not you. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's controlling helping women. Helping him. She's Help. helping him. Well, I don't think that's it. it. Doesn't matter what you think. Yes. Leave him alone. Well, I never saw that before. Hmm. What does that say He's about lying. you? Lying. That's not He's him. Lying. That's not really. Him. That's what they would say, right? Yes, that's it, what they do say. Uh, stop and think, lady. If you're married to this guy for ten years and it shows out that he really loves ABC, and you go, no, "That's not him." What does that say about you? That means you're not letting him be him. You're not mm-hmm. giving him a chance to express what he truly loves about mm-hmm. life. If you see your spouse's flag page, oh, oh, I don't like it. And I've never heard a man do that. Only women. And it's stunning how many women do it. Well, they try to get all this opinion about what he is or who they think she is. If your husband's results come out way different than you think, that's on you. It's not that he didn't do the test right. It's that you're not listening. You're not paying attention. And you're pushing on him what you think he should be. Stop that for heaven's sakes. All right, so let him do the test, and then you get these printouts, and it's really fun to go over it. And you know what's really neat is when you read your results of your partners to them, rather than you just reading it. Mm -hmm. We've actually noticed this, that if you read your own flag page story, the computer will print out a little Mm -hmm. story about who you are and stuff like that, and it's just a computer, but it's pretty accurate. That if you read it yourself, that's kind of neat, but it doesn't, but when you hear someone else read it to you, Mm -hmm. they tend to light up. Because mm-hmm. people love to hear what's right about them. They love mm-hmm. to be validated. Uh, yeah, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Diane. <laughs> yeah, Mark. <laughs> Some people, for example, mention trying to kill the other person all the time. And that's not particularly helpful. <laughs> you think? <laughs> you don't have that in your flag page? I don't have the desire to be killed in my flag page. But what if you have the desire to kill in your flag? How about that? I don't have then that either. Do do? No, what if I have that? I'm sorry. Right you my find flag. somebody else. Murder. <laughs> By the way, that's not a trait that it's you can choose It's not a trait. From. It doesn't show it's bad stuff. It only shows good stuff. It's just being a jerk. You better not disappear because they're going to throw me in prison. 
I think I will just actually go oh. AWOL for a few days and just let this play out and see what happens. There's, they're going to play all these comments in front of the jury, uh-huh. and I'm going to be toast. There was nobody ever found, but, but he said. Well. This said, be an episode of that show, How to Get Away with Murder. <laughs> That's uh, right. Exactly. All right. Okay, back to your flag page. Uh, uh, so anyway, read it to each other. Read your spouses to them and, and talk about it. And uh, you say, well... You know, that's kind of true, but that's maybe not exactly true. Good. Have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's just a computer. The computer is not all knowing. It's not Oz, the great Oz. It's not the great and powerful Oz. It's certainly not God. Uh, But it's a great starting. By and large, most people think it just nails them. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's me. Mm-hmm. Just nails it. Others, well, it's kind of me, but yet it's, well, that's, that's fine. Then have that conversation. Even if it's not 100% accurate, it's worth the conversation. Talk mm-hmm. about who you guys are and what motivates you and sort of things. Because when people get what they love about Life Supported, it's virtually impossible not to be happy. And couples that are struggling, what they're doing is they're criticizing the things the other person loves the most about life. Mm -hmm. Usually, and every time I, and I only counsel, the only time I really counsel people, I always have them take that test. Always take the test. Because right there, you'll see the key to their problem. Because he'll say, these five things are real important to me, and then you're talking to her, and you find out she criticizes those things all the time. Well, you can't succeed. You know, well, I don't like those things. So what? Nobody likes, you know, here's the thing about marriage. (laughs) Every argument in marriage really boils out to one mm-hmm. simple argument. Why can't you be more like me? Mm-hmm. Right? You're talking about the normal, everyday marriage stuff. Listen, the flag page, if your spouse has internet girlfriends and is dating the neighbor's wife, the flag page is not going to <laughs> solve that problem for you. Um, actually, mm-hmm. it can. It can. Bad I've, behavior, the flag page, I have the bad se- behavior. Listen, That's gonna it's, fix it. it's hard to comprehend. I had this one lady. She comes in. She'd been having affairs. All right. And they were on the verge of divorce. They came in. They were furious. He was furious. Neither one of them were Christians. Okay. But she's acting out this really bad way. And he's really mad. And they come to me because, I don't know, they saw me on TV or something. So, and I'm thinking, I got nothing for you, man. What am I going to tell you and stuff? So, we take the test. And I look at her results. And... Her fun, desire for fun, was off the charts. I mean, it made me look I'm on, like I'm on mm-hmm. morphine. This lady's just driven. And, but one of the problems with fun people is they seek out all kinds of stuff for no other reason than at the moment it's fun and it's exciting. And it gets their heart pumping. Uh, they don't really mean to be mean or cruel. Diane, <laughs> we don't mean to be mean, <laughs> but it's just fun. <laughs> It's only fun if the person you're doing it to thinks it's fun. Your no, wife no, 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 no. You do not you understand that. fun country because fun country, it's fun. It doesn't matter if anybody agrees with it. All right. So, you know, she's, I see this off the charts and I just asked her a question. I said, did you really want to be with these guys? No, she just cried. No, I didn't because he's mad and stuff. And I said, look, I see. Do you think this is accurate? describing it sounds like you're just a fun driven person and he goes yeah that's really her and she goes yeah so let me ask you a question is it possible that in your quest for fun you allowed yourself to get into situations where you wound up doing stuff you never really intended to do at all but your motive was it was just fun and you're hanging out and she just starts crying yeah that's exactly what it was and all of a sudden it made sense to him okay that's why she's been doing this okay and I said, so you need to be careful about this. Just because you feel it, I mean, you should do it. I preach out like crazy. Mm -hmm. But it explains why she was doing it. And you, sir, you need to make sure that you're helping her have fun and meeting that need in other ways so she doesn't wind up in bars and stuff trying to have fun. But she's going to need to have fun. You can't just tell her to stay at home and Mm -hmm. read magazines. Maybe that's what he likes to do. She's going to have to have girlfriends or you guys have to take her places and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Anyway, as I explained this to them, the change in their countenance was stunning. They walked out of there holding hands. He had completely forgiven her because now he had a reason and understanding why she had done okay. what she had done. It was stunning to me. I would have killed the woman personally. But the fact that you just sat down and you went through this and showed them, here's why you guys are doing it. All of a sudden it makes sense. They could forgive. They could start working on but we need to avoid in the future, and boom. So, yes, even really destructive behavior, you can often find the reason for it in this program. And when you start to know why people do what they do, it is cha- it's life-changing for me. I can't explain why 
in a situation like that, they'd walk out holding hands and they're all happy and huggy. It's stunning to me. They were literally on the verge of divorce and had every reason to divorce. Just getting to understanding saved their marriage. Anyway, all right, so much for that. We're going to come back with one of my favorite segments, the dating questions, right after this. Want more of Mark? Visit markgunger.com. There you will find everything that Mark has to offer. I require no invitation for quiet walks and rendezvous. My only expectation, please forgive me, is that you're with me. What the pretty music of Michael O'Brien as we go into the world of dating. What have you got? It's a guy writing. All right. He says, I've had two failed relationships. Both of them ended with the same comment. The girl says... I am always leading the relationship and have realized that I didn't love you. Apparently, with women, they oh, want the guy. I'm always, what? The girls both said to him, yeah. I'm always leading this relationship. Leading. He's leading the relationship. No, no. The girl is saying to him. That she, I that's not I'm trying to figure out who's leading. the leader here. She's and the saying leading. to him. The women are complaining that they have to lead. I have to lead this relationship and realize I don't love you. Apparently with women, they want the guy to lead the relationship. Can you define more how I can do that? And is it something to learn or is it just part of the character of who I am? What do you suggest to be able to get a girl back who has reached this phase? He said that he's on the flag page if this makes any difference. Good. He is fun. Peace. Peace. And I bet you the peace is high. The one thing about peace people, and fun peace people tend to be the most lovable people on earth. And lovable people oftentimes go along to get along. That's just the way that they're wired. Uh, these two girls that you were dating obviously wanted some guy who was much stronger mm -hmm. in their opinions and stuff like that. Let him go. Man, don't get all freaked out because two girls dumped Not your butt. You. So what? Move on. The reality is you will probably f wind up with some girl who is a leader and who likes to be a leader. Mm -hmm. And you'll let them go because you don't care. Mm -hmm. Go with that. Don't try to be something you're not. See, what he's saying is, Pastor, how do I be something? How do I become something I'm not? Because I'm this peace, low, yeah. feely guy. I would argue don't do that. Because you can't maintain it. At some point, you're always going to be back with who you are. One of the things for sure about really strong women who are kind of these <laughs> take-charge chicks, they almost always inevitably wind up marrying some guy who is real peaceful. And then she and has to learn to be okay with that and not be mad down the road. Well, but that's probably been his problem. He's probably been getting those strong women. Yes. And then they're sitting there thinking, well, I'm the one always making the decision. I'm always the one doing everything. I'm leading this. How come you're not? Yeah. But the thing is, yeah. is let him go. You need yeah. to find the some girls. The issue is them, not him. Yeah. Right? More than likely. Or they're just not the right girl for him. I don't know. You know. Uh, although there are women who aren't real strong leaders, and they do want someone to lead. So I, I could see going either way. I could see them. He, he's dating these girls. And, gee, I don't like this. I want you to really take charge. And he's not a take charge kind of guy. Well, then or, let him go. Chances are, actually, I would chat because who knows, Phil? My guess is really bossy chicks like guys like this because they let them take charge. And most people who love to be in control love to be in control. Yeah. They're the, not ashamed of it. The, yeah, the only thing I'm thinking is because I know, I mean, I know people who are married and the lady's the leader uh -huh. and is constantly upset that and the she's husband mad about now it. Now, that, that's what that's she's just talking about. What I'm saying is they will always wind up marrying a guy. Who's peace? Uh, who's warm and fuzzy and stuff? Like. Then they'll complain about it. Yes, that's what I. My <laughs> the women. The guy so. still stays happy about it. Yeah, he doesn't Here's care. a guy. He's gonna be happy no matter what. If he's got a bossy chick or a chick who's mad that he's not, he's still gonna be happy. He still wants the girls back. He was happy with them. That's mm -hmm. just the kind of guy he is. The problem is the women in this situation, who are strong women, and then they marry a guy, and he's stupid. And why don't you be a man? Why don't you stand up for yourself? What she's saying is, why don't you be like me? Which is what we talked about before. Mm -hmm. This is the problem everybody has. Be like me. Be like me. Why can't you be like me? Because he's not you. But the problem is you're not going to have this conversation <laughs> until after you, after you get married. Here, strong women who marry other, who date other strong men, do not stay with these guys. They can't stand it because all they do is argue mm -hmm. and they fight. They're just always sparks flying. On rare occasions they'll marry each other, but then they sparks fly all the time. Interestingly enough, couples who do this tend not to get divorced. Do you know why? Too stubborn? Yes. Too Neither stubborn. of them one wants to lose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but these are the couples who argue and scream till the day they die. You know, on their deathbed, 98. 
You're dying. Shut yeah. up. You're dying. I'm not going to die. Tell you to, uh, shut, you're going to die. No, I'm going to die first. Oh, I don't want you to. You know, that's just the way they are, and they stay married that way. <laughs> so interestingly enough, couples who do pull that off tend to stay married. But most people, strong women, if they run into a strong guy, cannot handle it, and the, they can't date. A strong woman who loves to be strong, and I think it's fine to be strong. We don't have time to get into why I think it's time, fine for a woman to be strong. This idea of the man has to call all the shots is not what the Bible's talking about. Uh, so anyway, uh, they will always wind up with a guy like this. Mm-hmm. All right? Uh, and then after you get married, she'll criticize you because you're like that. <laughs> but, but all couples criticize each other for who they are. I just wouldn't get stressed out about it. My thing is, these girls want this real strong guy. Don't write me or talk to people. How can I be something like these two girls wanted me to be? No! Don't do that because you cannot maintain it. Be you. I promise you, there are lots of wonderful girls out there who will think you are the sweetest guy in the world, and they'll be so happy because you'll let them just be their little bossy selves mm-hmm. and let them do it. And they have their, you know, probably some perfect-natured woman will marry a guy like this, and uh, and then she'll always criticize him because he's <laughs> not that way. It is what it is. It's life. You don't want any problems? Do what Paul said. Stay single. Married. Absolutely. But don't try to be something you're not. Let those girls go and let a dozen other ones go if they can't handle it. You're going to find some girl who will absolutely love you for you. Just keep looking. Don't get hung up because two dumped your butt. All right, we'll take a break and be back with our final segment right after this. Attend Mark's Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage event. Visit LaughYourWay.com for upcoming dates and locations. We're back on the Mark Gardner Show, final segment, Love, Marriage, and Relationship. Diane, during the break, was saying, you've been beating up on women. I, I wasn't beating up on the woman. I was validating him. She should be. Oh, I wasn't speaking of just the segment. She was talking about. She, what? I was not just, speaking just about that segment because okay. I had made the comment prior to that segment. Okay, it was so, about the whole first part of the show okay, and which, the other one that we taped specific. earlier today. Being specific, woman. That everything, there's something wrong with women. What's the matter with you women? What you did women I say? think specific. this and you women think that. Specific. I'm sorry. I have to go back. I will take notes. I will go back and watch That's the one shows. Of the this was That's not a one of the problems with women. <laughs> this was not a conversation to have on the air. It was it a conversation. Is at the break. So if you want, I will go back. I will, I will only listen. do it on the air because notes. you have to behave yourself. I will take If notes. I have the conversation, that's what <laughs> couples should only argue on the air. Yes. Because that way He won't talk to themselves. me off the air. <laughs> because she gets violent. He does not behave himself off the air she either. She gets violent and throws stuff. He does not behave himself off the air Phil comes either. and says, Dad, can I get in? It's, I'm afraid of her. No. That's what no, like. don't don't leave me alone in here with I'm her. telling That's what you, Tim says, don't don't leave me with her. Please. If you go back and listen <laughs> with the filter of, am I really saying that women just being a woman is the problem? You'll hear what I'm describing oh, to oh, you. Well, tell me, I don't know. If if it just so happened that these bigger emails that it was the woman who was in the problem, then yeah, it's not always the way. men act all the time. Are you talking about how he says that women don't confront? I mean, that, that, to me, that's, that's, no, that's what I heard him say the, most of the time. There's something the matter with you women. The problem <laughs> is you women. Oh, it's the nonstop he's, he's constantly, chorus of phrases he's like a hyperbolic, that. I'm a hyperbolic machine. Yes. <laughs> I exaggerate to make points. The problem is with a woman who doesn't confront bad behavior. I'm trying to validate the women. They shouldn't put up with this crap. The reason their lives are terrible is because they put... Listen, you put a situation... I'm not disagreeing with that. Well, then what is your problem? <laughs> I ha- how many times do I have to state it? There is something wrong with you women. The problem is you women. You women are broken. You women. You, you, like you, women you women. You women. You women. You know, it's like you women. You men sometimes are morons. <laughs> I don't sit here and go, yeah, Help you me! Men. You I'm men are I'm in zone with her! No, oh. you're not. Because you don't listen. You are listening to my words and not listening to my meaning. And that's what you say, have okay. said repeatedly okay. in the last several weeks. Okay. You are not listening. All right. You are just picking apart the phrases and not listening to the intent. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to what you said. I know you weren't. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm done. See ya. Adios. <laughs> 
Diane's going to find a new job. <laughs> and she's going to have a... Tra- <laughs> uh, I'm going to go transgender because I'm a man. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> I'll be in the elite category and then I'll be fine because I'll no longer be a troubled, ridiculous woman who causes all of the problems of the universe. I know what your problem is. <laughs> That's just your problem. That's my problem. Because all women are witches. Apparently. I'm sorry, were you saying that? Look, I don't know what you're talking about. If I've been unfair, you have to be specific. 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 Tim, as fast as you can, that upload whole, that the whole files last, from that whole these last two segment. shows. I was talking about the guy. I just made be the yourself. comment before Let the last girls... segment. <laughs> you're seeing now, you're nailing it down to the, the final the segment, segment, and it wasn't that, about that. It was the flag page and who you are. And... She's crazy! Pray for me! See you guys. Bye bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!